Hey guys, Seawolf here. Um, I just wanted to make a, a video to show off the new Mission Control Designer features. So, this week I've been working on the routes. Um, last week I actually made the route node, um, and this week I was working on the kind of AI results um, and AI orders. I'll go in that in a minute. But I thought a good um, example to show everything off would be to go from end to end to make a small uh, custom contract type and um, and show you those features um, in action. So, so here we go, this is the Mission Control um, Designer and when you've got the mod installed you get this new button and you click it and you'll go inside. So these are some of the dead claim campaign contract types I've make it, I'm be making and um, and this is like one of the example routes um, I was testing out earlier today. So we'll go through and kind of effectively recreate um, this one I made this morning. Um, so let's uh, let's start. So you click this uh, yellow button on top there, and you make a new contract type. We're going to call it. Uh, we'll just put it in dead claim for now. We we'll call it race. Um, we'll give it an ID that's not used by anything. Uh, Mission control takes up the uh, this this kind of range here. Um, we're going to make just for now and make it a story contract just to make it easier. But um, if you were wanting it to be one of the contract types that show up in just the usual contracts, you would have story off and you'd have um, procedural on, basically. Uh, we'll just call it race as a friendly uh, name for it. Um, it's going to save this. I'm just going to copy and paste some, just some of the. Uh, icons and illustrations that will show up. There we go. Here. Yeah. Okay, um, we'll save that. So now we're going to create an encounter layer. So that is effectively an instance of um, a map and um, a contract type together. Um, and you can have multiple of these um, on the same map, so it's not kind of a hard link between map and the contract type, but um, it's just a, a representation of a, com a unique combination of map and contract type. So um, we're going to create that. We'll give it a designer name. I'll just call it, um, yeah, call it dead claim story for now. Um, not story, sorry, race. Um, we'll call this uh, dead claim race and we will come back to map ID in a minute. We'll just call it race as a friendly ID um, and I'll leave the rest like that for now. Um, I'll give that a save. Now we need to decide on what map we want for this um, testing out the routes. As you can tell by the words I'm using, I'm going to make like a mini race with it. Okay, so let's go find uh, a map. So you can go to this map viewer area um, and as you go fling through the maps here, these are all the multiplayer, so it's like the skirmish maps, and it's also the um, story maps, and it's also the, the normal maps for the normal contracts. So you actually get access to quite a few more maps than most people um, have either ever played, because the arena ones are the skirmish maps, so lots of people never played arena. So you have all these ones here. You also have down the bottom all the story maps too, as well as the normal maps, so um, pretty cool. So uh, just for this race, I've already decided um, I want to use um, one of the maps. I just need to find it. And it's the Bluffs High. Um, so if I ever wanted to go, OK, this overview looks quite good. If that was good enough, brilliant. If not, you can load into the map um, and have a look. So we're just going to have a quick look around. Um, this is what I did a bit earlier. Um, so as I was looking for a nice map, I thought, hey, this, this looks pretty cool. I want to make like a play race. So um, there's a perfect kind of track, kind of square rectangle track here. That's great. So if I press escape, get out, you come back to the view. Um, I want to use that map. So I will click this copy to clipboard button down the bottom, go back to our encounter layer, and then just copy and paste the map ID in there um, and give that a save. And, uh, and then that's your encounter layer um, set up pretty nice and easy. Um, okay, let's uh, load into the encounter. So um, it will load the map in. If you had already created um, an encounter on the contact contract type and you'd set up the whole structure, chunks, triggers and all that, um, at this point you'd all already see those. They'd all be dumped in the center of the map and then you'd place them out specifically for this new map. 
as we're creating a new contract type, we don't have anything, so it's a fresh start. Um, okay, so first thing um, we're going to want to do is put down a player spawn. So um, you create a chunk, a player spawn chunk. So this right clicking is uh, the context menu. You'll see this a lot on the structure um, tree here. Um, so we have a uh, player lance chunk um, and we're going to create the player lance spawner and its spawn points, spawn units. Um, now you could just do it manually by going to create new node um, spawner and setting it all up, but I've actually um, got a work in pro uh, progress um, template system. So um, that's little snippets of structure that you could just quickly um, save and then put down in the future. So you've got create from template, um, and we've got a four player lance, eight player lance. For now, we're just going to put the, the four player lance down. And there you go, as you see, um, it'll place those units down here. Um, actually, I could probably improve the template by having um, positions show up, but um, we'll just drag our, our units out. I press uh, F on the keyboard to focus the the units. So um, yeah, that's okay. For this, we're not going to be really moving our units around. We're just going to be watching um, an employer run around the map. Um, because that's what we want to try and show off. It's the roots and it's the kind of the AI, um, to, to, the result to set the AI to do what we want. So, okay, that's the player. Um, next thing we're going to want to put down is a lance because it's going to be an employer lance. So we just call it employer. Um, everything else looks fine there. We're going to right click, create a new node, a spawner, and it's just going to be a simple lance node. Um, and we're just going to call this the employer lance. We're going to set the team to be um, employer. And uh, actually, I'll do that in a second because it looks quite nice. When um, we're going to throw them over here for a minute, that's just the center of the spawn. Um, right click, create a new spawn point. Um, we're going to rotate this around here. So you can use the rotate um, button tool on top, or you can use um, T on the keyboard and rotate it around. Um, and what I wanted to show you just now is if you change the team, it just changes the color. So got a green color there for it. So we got that. We're going to create just two units. They're going to race up, race against each other. So um, yeah, I mean, I'll probably actually just change the spawn zone around itself rather than these units. Okay, so we have our two races. Um, I'm just going to save this. Okay, um, and we have a player. Right, what we need next is, um, well, we probably want a boundary actually. So right click, um, just so we set up a map boundary. Every every encounter needs one. So um, just make an encounter a boundary chunk and we're gonna uh, have a region and a boundary. So there we go, that's populated it in there. This is too big for us though. So we're just gonna um, say 500 by 700, is that? I think that's what I used last time. That's kind of... Uh, actually, we want it a bit larger, maybe, than that. Not that large. Um, and we'll probably go larger again here. Okay, okay, that, that's fine. This covers kind of the routes I want them to run around um, on the track, so... Okay, save that. We do have an autosave that triggers every... Um, configurable time interval, so it's like 60 seconds, so. Uh, right, okay. Um, next we're going to, um, we'll just give ourselves, um, well, well, we'll start on the route now, actually. So we'll do a chunk, um, we'll just do a container. Container chunks are just for general, most stuff can go in a container chunk. We'll just call this um, the root chunk, and we're gonna create a new node, and we're gonna create navigation and route. So if I just go onto it, um, yeah, it's like every other center point, just a circle. I might, I might configure it that for different nodes and stuff, but it's just a center point. Um, and let's go put some points down. So um, we'll put the first point like where the where they are. And then if you start putting down points, um, you get like a nice little gizmo uh, and, and just like a line pointing towards the next point. It's, it's important to note that um, 
the units won't take a direct line for this. They will just use their pathfinding. But it's just help, helping the modder visualize um, yeah, where the rough path is going. So, so if I do a few more of those, we're going to just put them right around the... Um, uh, so this is where maybe the... Is that zone okay? Yeah, that zone's fine. Okay. So we'll just put that, we'll just be putting those around. Um, if you put the, the roots, uh, the points too close to each other, um, the AI is not so clever and it will try to go to the points in order, I think. Um, so it would, if it kind of ran past the first two points, oops, um, yeah, it might backtrack. So um, I would recommend you put your points far enough away so a, sp a full sprint can't really, uh, can't really do it. So, so um, yeah, this is uh, this is pretty good. So we have our route surrounding the on the track. Give that a save. So actually, this will be interesting to see how this works. I put the, these last two points close to each other. Um, now, on the on the route, you can say how you want the units following a route to like walk along it, run along it. You've got three types. You've got one way where they'll just run it and stop. You've got a circuit where they'll just keep going. Um, so when they hit this end point, they'll kind of restart it. And you've got ping pong. So when they hit this end point, they would turn around and go back the way they came. So I'm going to try circuit, um, which actually showed up some bug with the points there. Just moved all the nice little yellow points on the ground for some reason. But OK, doesn't matter. So. Okay, um, what we're going to next, need next now is just to end contract type. We're going to have um, an objective to watch the race, and we're just going to have a zone. So if you, when you walk into it, um, it triggers the end end game. So we're going to make a new trunk. Uh, we're going to call that end. And we'll create a new region, and this is one of the kind of regions you can walk into. Um, and we're going to just make that a bit smaller. We only need one unit to go into it, so it um, doesn't really matter how big it is, just so I can walk into it. So it's a bit smaller than that, maybe 50. Yeah, that's fine. You can hover up and down, actually, with uh, the Q and E keys, which I keep forgetting, even though I put that in myself. Okay. Um, I'll just say, uh, just positive zone, should always show region one active. That's what's always going to be showing up. And then we're going to create a um, objective. We'll say uh, it's going to be an occupy region. So what we want to do is when we walk into that zone, we want to trigger uh, objective completed. Um, and since there's only one, going to be one objective, that will automat automatically um, complete the, the uh, contract. So um, we'll just go um, end game, whatever, objective. Now, we'll just say, like, watch race, watch the race, and leave. OK. So you select the region. It's automatically selected. We only have one um, lance to use. It's the same thing. Uh, only one unit, and we want it to end instantly. Um, and we'll have uh, Samir come pick you up. So use the dropship. Save that. Um, and uh, what we'll also do is there's also, usually with contract types, there's this thing called like the default dialogue. Um, and that's like the starting, the ending success, and the ending failure dialogue. So I'll just dump those in there too. That was through a template. So you don't need to mess around with they're, they're like special IDs for these that the game's hard coded into the game. So you can just right click and input them as, as a template. And that's that's like straight away easy done. So okay, let's have a review. Um, we've got our boundaries. We've got our player start position. We've got our um, employer who's going to run around. Ah, right. Okay. Well, he's not going to run around around at the moment. Run around because we've not told them to do that. So under the employer lance, um, this is one of the new features that as well I wanted to show off. So we had the routes, but the units um, won't do anything until you tell them to follow the route. 
two ways to do that. You have an AI order where you can say um, follow the follow the route. And you can say sprint and you give it the route. Um, now that this would work fine for this contract type. If you had any other I think units in the game other than the player, as soon as they see that unit, um, they would kind of enter in this kind of semi-combat mode uh, or kind of caution mode with the core AI. Um, so then the units wouldn't follow the patrol anymore. So um, I don't have anything else in this map, so that's fine. But if you wanted to avoid that, um, you can change the AI behavior now um, with the set behavior tree um, AI order. And then you can set it, say, to um, follow route AI tree. So we're going to use this now because that's going to apply those on spawning. Just to show you what else you could do, um, and I'll delete this before we, we demo. Um, you can make a trigger um, and you can say when the um, lance has spawned, for instance. And this is basically doing the same thing as before. Um, and you say when the lance has spawned, um, you could put like, um, I think you have to use the um, the variable name in the code for this particular condition. And you can say check the spawner like ID of what lance, lance has spawned. Um, and then you can say if that's when the lance has spawned and if it is that like employer lance, for instance, then um, you can right click add a result and do something. So there's loads of things you can do and there's even gonna be more in the future. Um, and this one's for AI. And then you've got the, the two type of things I just set now on the spawner, but you can set a um, patrol route, which is the same options, follow forward, should sprint, um, start closest point. The lance that should do it, um, but you can actually say team or unit. So you could say, apply that behavior to the entire team or just to a single unit with a GUI uh, ID. Uh, and then the behavior tree. So you can do the same thing. You can say, uh, set the lance uh, and you can give it the, the employer lance. And you can say, I want to change that to be follow route. So um, two ways to do it. They, they have their uses. Um, the triggers and the results could be used for dynamically changing the AI based off conditions that happen in the game at the time. So, and uh, the one I'm, the one we're going to use for now is just the one to, when they spawn for the first time. You set this set up basically. So, okay. Um, so yeah, right. Okay, let's go back to our check before we we play with this. Um, so the AI, the lance is there. It's got the AI, the roots there, the boundaries there, the player spawn is there, the res zone to go into end the missions there. We have an objective for that. Um, one thing we need to do as well, actually make a contract objective. That's the um, kind of the main objective that would show up when the loading screen um, and other like other in-game objectives tie into that, they link into that. So think of it like a parent objective um, and the other ones that are in the map go under that effectively. So we're gonna need that for the, um, the unique ID and then we go back to objective and put that in there as well. Um, so I think that's done. We should go try it out. Um, before we can try it out though, we're going to need to make a contract. We need to make a contract for that contract type. So I've got some like I've already made before. Um, I, it's a lot of JSON editing at the moment. So the plan is for us to have a button on the designer, you press it and it will auto generate um, kind of as much as possible of this kind of contract um, JSON. So this is the stuff that vanilla get the vanilla game has. Uh, it's, it's the kind of customization layer that applies on top of a contract type. So you have the contract type, which is what we've been building in the designer. And then you have like the kind of the flavor that goes on top where it changes the names, changes the, um, the dialogue and things like that. So this is where the dialogue comes from, so. So what I'll do, I made one earlier. I won't, I won't go through it now and, and make it all because the video will be too large. But um, just for this example, I'm going to make, um, go make a contract called that, Dead Claim Race. Um, just making it in Dead Claim for now, just to show things off. 
um, contract type is dead claim race, and the idea of this contract is going to be called dead claim race. Uh, we'll call it dead claim race example. Otherwise, I don't want to name it the same thing as the contract type. Okay. Um, just just a few points. Um, you can basically outline the IDs here as well. So this is what we're going to have to do. So we go back and um, say for the contract objective, we're just going to replace the IDs here. So watch the the employer race. Um, for the one objective we have, we're going to do the same thing. If we go back and um, put that in here too. So this is that one objective there um, and change it here. This is how they link together as well. Uh, and then player spawn is a unique ID, so that doesn't need to change. The dialogues I mentioned before, these are unique IDs, uh, it's like special IDs, so these don't need to change. Um, but the spawners do need to change. So um, player lance spawner is the same, you don't need to change that, but um, you do need to change the... Uh, no, you don't need to change the player lance unit IDs, that's all good. But you do need to change the other ones, the employer ones. So let's get out of player one and we go to the employer and we find the Lance here, the Lance Spawner ID. We change that and then we're going to go into the two Lances that uh, these are the way that like the mechs have been hard coded in. I mean, you could find them by tag or you could do whatever um, you normally do. That's the IDs changed there. Um, everything else should we can keep the names whatever it doesn't matter so okay so this should work so I'm gonna um, boot this up in the game and we'll, we'll, we'll have a look okay so we are loaded in let's just load up um, dead claim campaign and have a look and see what uh, see if it works or not this is one of the reasons why I'd like to auto-generate this contract um, JSON as much as possible, where it fills in the IDs as well, because any point you're doing copy and pasting, um, there's always a risk of forgetting or messing something up. So, okay, we're going to go to the contracts area. We're just going to, just for this test, we're going to go into the debug menu and spawn that contract. So if we go down the bottom, we should see, yeah, dead claim race is our contract type. We can see the only encounter layer we have, um, sorry, the only yeah, uh, contract we have for that, and there's the only map that we built it for. So in the encounter layer, we only have one encounter layer. So, uh, the, well, that looks good. Um, okay, so we've got watch me race my lance around the map. A race, that sounds great, I'll bring the beer. So we'll see how this works, if it works. Um, as you can see here on top right, it will tell you your contract type, um, who created it. There'll be an area um, for the authors to edit it. Um, you can actually add created by. There'll be, I think uh, I've got already sections for contributed to uh, like contributors. Um, and I think maybe even a third one, maybe like designers, because there might be a team of you making these things. So it's not fair just for one person to get the credit. So, um, OK, well, that loaded. So there's no problems there. Uh, we have our objective, watch the employer race, watch me uh, race my lance around the map. Okay, um, let's see if this works or not. So we've got the two dropships coming in. This is going to be fun. So this, these are our two racers on the left, um, and this is our team on the on there. We're just going to sit and watch and skip our turns. So so um, using BT Debug, my debug um, mod, um, I can disable the fog of war for a second, and you can I turn on some debug view. Um, and you can actually see um, the yellow points are the waypoints of our route. And you can see they are where we place them. They're dotted around following the road, which is great. Exactly what we want. Um, put it all back to normal. Um, the skip our turn. And hey, brilliant. So what would normally happen if there were no enemies or anything on like that? And... and um, and if it's not a mission control additional lance, those guys literally just stand there bracing the entire time. They just 
don't they don't move they don't do anything so but here we go um so they're racing so let's uh let's see who wins not that we can tell them apart they're the same mech <laughs> so both uh was that shadow hawks so yeah so come on you can do it shared vision on the um ai so we don't even need to move we just watch them you can do it i support neither of you both of you okay um but yeah this is pretty cool so what we're seeing here is them following the route and they're able to follow it is because the um, behavior tree so the ai brain has been swapped out there's normally uh called the core ai one and that's used for most of the game but there are a few others there's some special ones for um some of the story maps there's some special ones for like the convoy um for like and just for ones for following the routes as well so and there we go and these guys will just race until forever basically um so we're not going to watch them for much longer just um this is just showing now that they've actually um they're on the circuit as we we set so if they were ping-ponging they would have gone back the way they came if it was one way they would have just stopped um embraced started bracing um but these guys will just race until the end of days so okay this is a good race but we've got some fighting to do so let's um head on out so this was our objective um so we didn't set anything specific to say end the contract type but the way the game works is if there's one objective or if all the objectives are finished we'll just walk in there and there we go we've told the, the game to use the dropship when we set up the contract type good job commander there we go and and that is that so um yeah there's quite a lot there but i hope you guys enjoyed this video just showing how you can go end to end with a designer um and showing off the new features of the roots and um of the ai control so um as always i want to thank uh, my patreon supporters um i very much appreciate any support from anyone so thank you very much um yeah i hope you enjoyed until next video take care guys bye